Hi, hello, I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, <laughs> and welcome to Millennial Planter. Today we are doing all the thrips talk, talking about all the thrips, the awful, really the worst type of houseplant pests. I mean, maybe aside from aphids, aphids are really just oh so gross but thrips are kind of the bane of my existence and if you clicked on this video they're probably the same <laughs> for you or maybe you want to get ahead of the problem and try to preemptively treat them treat your plants or try to prevent them from ever coming into your collection well welcome to the right video i've been dealing with thrips for i don't even know like four years i get them every single year from winter to spring and after doing research for this video it makes a lot of sense in this video we're going to be talking about what thrips are signs to look for how to prevent them and then i'm going to show you the aftermath of my plants and what they look like now post thrips and post treatment i also have clips of the thrips live in action really just sucking and munching on the foliage of my beautiful plants so if that's something you're interested in, stick around, give the video a thumbs up, and if you're not a part of the plant community already here at Millennial Planter, hit the subscribe button because I would love to have you. So now let's get on to these little, these little spawns, spawns of Satan, because man, oh man, they have done some damage to my plants before, let me tell ya. So thrips are a common houseplant pest, if you don't know, plants do get pests just like anything else out in nature. And they're the ones that I personally get the most in my collection. I don't know why. I haven't dealt with much with spider mites. I've never done, dealt with, ugh, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Spider mites and thrips are the main pests that I deal with. I don't wanna jinx myself and say any of the other things. Thrips are insects. They're these little thin body winged insects. Yes, I said winged because in their adult form, they do f fly. And there's over 6,000 species sucking the life out of plants worldwide, which is pretty crazy to have to be the person that identifies 6,000 different types of thrips. Ugh. And basically what they do is that they scrape the foliage of your plants, the flowers, they like to just scrape it and suck the juices out. Now the adults and the pupa, which are just the baby forms, overwinter in the soil during the winter time. And in the springtime, they like to come alive, which makes a lot of sense because I have always dealt with them from winter to spring. Whenever spring starts coming and the weather starts warming up, bam, I get thrips. And that makes so much sense because somehow they're getting into the soil and that's very common. Pests just come in and out of your house. They're so tiny, it's really easy for them to have access to pretty much anything. Windows, sometimes they stick to your clothes, like from random gusts of wind. Sometimes they're already in the soil that you're buying to pot your plants up in, so good times. And once they overwinter and come alive, these adults will lay eggs inside the tissue of not only the foliage but the flowers and also the stems i did not know that they can get into the stems so definitely um when you're checking for thrips check everywhere i always see them on the undersides of the leaves the most rather than in the stems and the flowers you just got to check the whole plant another fun fact about thrips is that they don't need a mate to reproduce and they can lay up to 80 eggs at once, which truly just sounds like a nightmare. And now hopefully you're understanding why I call them literal spawns of Satan. <laughs> so eventually the babies become adults and in the adult stages they can fly, which is how they're able to get into your collection and like mass produce like crazy. And in the warmer months, they can go from that pupa stage to adulthood in a matter of 16 days. That that quickly which is just absolutely insane these guys just want to spread as much of their eggs and their deadly mouth suckingness as as they can as fast as they can <laughs> so that's a little bit about thrips here is kind of what they look like this is what the baby form looks like this is what they looked like while they were munching on my melanochrysum fun times so now some signs you want to look for when you have thrips so first and foremost 
any sort of yellowing leaves. So now one or two yellowing leaves, especially if they're bottom leaves. So let's take this Philodendron Dark Lord. Let's say I have like a yellowing leaf here and a yellowing leaf here. These are bottom leaves. So usually bottom leaves are going to naturally die off. I wouldn't be too worried about that. But now if I saw yellowing leaves on the bottom and especially on the top and I saw maybe like three to four of them, then I know to definitely start checking my plants for any sign of pests. That's for any pest worldwide, thrips, spider mites, aphids. When you see multiple yellowing leaves, check your plants. And the easiest way to check your plants is because they're so, these bugs are so microscopic, they're so tiny. You can order magnifying glass. A lot of people do that. Or what I like to do is I like to hold them up to any sort of light, whether it be a flashlight or being right by my window by the sunlight and flipping the leaves over and just holding the plant still, holding that leaf still and just staring. If you see a little speck, you're going to stare at that speck for like a good 30 seconds to see if it moves because it's really hard to miss these guys and if you miss them you can definitely lose plants if they get too out of hand um, take it from personal experience <laughs> and here I have my philodendron melanochrysum and here is what the damage looks like on that you can see those puncture runes where they actually literally scraped the foliage so they definitely do some damage do some cosmetic damage thankfully I did while this thrips outbreak was kind of bad for me my plant is still okay <laughs> um, here you can't really see it as much they weren't on this leaf as much as they were on that top leaf but you can see some of the damage there and I thought they had killed off this leaf but so far this one is thrip free so now I have it by my humidifier trying to open up. It did kill the caterpillar. The caterpillar just like turned black and completely just was it was gross. <laughs> so I thought the leaf was going to be a goner but it's not thankfully. So yeah this is probably the leaf that um, you can see the most damage on because the other ones I actually kind of um, I snipped them off and threw them away. Dealing with thrips is really overwhelming, so let's talk about prevention and treatment. So when it comes to treating my plants, first and foremost, I'm going to isolate every plant that I can that is in that area. So this time I had them all in my grow tent, which was just an absolute nightmare. I had to take all of the plants out of the grow tent and I just essentially stuck them in the middle of this plant room and left them there. Then I went ahead and I treated them with this benign systemic and that is these little granules. It's like a fine powder that you can go ahead and sprinkle on into your soil and when you water your plants, that poison essentially is absorbed through the roots and it's spread throughout the whole plant so when the thrips bite into the plant they die and it also kills the eggs that are inside the tissues. It's really great. I really swear by it. I use it every year, twice a year and I'm, the directions I highly recommend following. Read them. It tells you how much to use. It tells you how to use the systemic safely. You definitely want to keep caution if you have animals or even little kids that will try to nibble on your plants. I mean, we all know kids do weird things, right? And then also if you're putting the plant outside and it's a flowering plant, you want to be mindful of that because it will kill pollinators. So definitely maybe just use it for your house plants and be mindful. And with that also being said, I don't ever... Uh, measure out the amount of systemic I use I'm being completely honest I kind of just eyeball it and I do feel like I do go a little bit heavier than the directions would recommend um, but I've also over treated plants so <laughs> just be mindful uh, when you're using it so once I use this systemic on all of my plants trust me it takes a while I will go ahead and spray down all of my plant foliage with Captain Bugs dead bug brew <sighs> tried to say that five times fast and that really just annihilates everything so the thing was systemic and I I haven't done much research on it but there is some reputable sources out there that says the systemic itself can actually help 
spider mite populations increase. I think it's something with the spinosadin that's inside of it. Help spider mites. I, I don't experience spider mites myself, but with the systemic and with the Captain Jacks, the Captain Jacks target spider mites. So using those two together is really just like a powerhouse duel and they'll be fine. <laughs> and that Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. You can find at Home Depot, you can find it at Lowe's. Sometimes they are out of stock because it is a really popular spray, but it's super, it's amazing. It's absolutely just great. And I will have links for everything down below through Amazon if you wanna do that as well. The thing with thrips is that you want to be persistent with your treatment. I would say probably treat your plants once a week with the spray because the systemic is good for up to six weeks. So spray your plants down, the foliage down, at least for once a week and everywhere, like I said, you wanna get on the undersides of the leaves, you wanna get on the stems, flowers, if you have flowers, because they will especially go after those and keep them isolated for that whole time. I have been treating my plants for about a month and a half now and I stopped, I, I, I cut back because they're doing a lot better. I haven't seen any thrips. I cut off the leaves that were the most infested because it was just, it was so gross. You all saw the footage. It was ugh, terrible. So now the unfortunate thing is that this systemic isn't available worldwide. So I did try to outsource to my planty community and see what other people use. And some people, rec a lot of people actually recommended predatory mites. So bugs like green lace wings or ladybugs or pirate minute pirate bugs are all really good i haven't tried predatory mites myself honestly at the point that my collection is at now i might be trying them out because individually treating my plants is a lot of work and it takes days so i haven't tried predatory mites yet there's this really good channel plant with rose that does a lot of she does a lot of predatory mite stuff so definitely check her channel out I'll link one of her videos down below talking more about it. Another suggestion I got was uh, Pure Crop 1, which I haven't used, but the person that I got the recommendation from really loves the products and she saturates her plants every four to five days with it. I'm not sure if that's available worldwide, but you can also check that out as well. But if you're just stuck using a spray, I would just definitely recommend upping your usage every four to five days of wiping down the foliage and keeping those plants isolated that whole time because if you're treating the adults and killing the adults off fast enough eventually your population will decrease Maybe you can even get the sticky fungus gnat traps that stick into your soil and catch some of those adults if your infestation gets to that point okay now we are going to show the <laughs> The aftermath. Um, some of my plants didn't fare too well. My Gloriosum, for example. My Gloriosum, for example, is down to one leaf, which is actually really sad. It does have another little leaf coming in, but I was really bummed about this just because Gloriosums and I don't have the best past, and this was like my, my one last chance at Gloriosums, and she got thrips pretty bad and I cut off, I don't know, maybe like two of her leaves, two or three of her leaves. And now we're down to this one that looks decently well. I did go ahead and put diatomaceous earth on all of my plants because when I found them, it was like two o'clock in the morning and I didn't have anything with me. I didn't have any spray or systemic on me. So diatomaceous earth was all that I had. Honestly, I feel like it just makes more of a mess than it helps. But um, some people do swear by diatomaceous earth, so if that's the course you want to take, then you would definitely need to <laughs> lay some towels down because it makes a huge mess. Um, but there's my Gloriosum. And then next, my Ficus umbellata, where I originally thought the thrips started from here, but I think they might have started on my Melanochryson that I showed you. But she's down to one leaf. She is not happy at all. Um, you can still see a lot of that diatomaceous earth on there. And this actually makes me really sad because she was in my grow tent and she was actually doing fairly decent, but for the longest time she had yellowing leaves and 
See, this is just, this is my, this is totally my fault. I saw the yellowing leaves and honestly, I just thought she was maybe getting chlorotic. So I just kind of ignored it for a while. And then sooner or later, all of her leaves were yellow. And mind you, there was only like three leaves on her. Uh, but eventually I was like, okay, well maybe we should check you. And that's when I found the Thirps infestation. They um, thankfully stayed away from my Hoya. Because in my grow tent, I have mainly Hoya and then some philodendron and then that one ficus. And they went for all the philodendron except for my Burl Marks Fantasy. And then they left my Hoya alone, which was really great because I would have been so sad if I lost any Hoya. And this is my Eplissima. I always forget the full name of this one. But she didn't really have like much thrip damage, but she definitely got burned from the treatment. And that was just from treating her and putting her under the light too soon. So if you want to spray your plants down, definitely keep them away from any sort of sunlight or grow light until the spray is dried because then you will get a lot of burn marks on your foliage. And then we also have this sad leaf here, but this is also a bottom leaf. So this one's gonna die off anyways, but the new growth on this side and on this side and that new leaf look really good. The next one that was there was my skeleton key. And this one, I don't remember if I saw thrips on it, but I did treat it. And it did end up getting these yellowing tips, as you can see. So it wasn't too happy, but it's doing okay. It didn't lose any foliage, so I'm really happy with that. I do need to water her though. She's a bit thirsty. I'm just going to acclimate her to be outside of my grow tent and she seems to be growing okay. And then the last plant was my melanochrysum that I showed you earlier. And I already showed that damage on the outside or on the other underside of the leaves. This is what the leaves look like now. This plant's also thirsty. I did cut a couple leaves from this one too. So that one was really sad, but the thrips were, whew, they were bad on this plant. They just went straight for this one. I guess just the big leaves and the velvetness of it um, really just seem scrumptious to these thrips. So there we have it, the aftermath of my plants and um, just some information about thrips. I really hope that this was helpful. Uh, I promise you it'll be okay. The biggest tip just to take away from this video is just persistence. You have to stay on top of the treatment because they don't just go away overnight. If you think you got one generation of adults that you see, you have to keep treating it because they probably most likely laid eggs somewhere and they're gonna come back and it sucks because they can spread so fast, especially once they're flying, but I promise you, you will get through it and at the end of the day if the plant is just too infested and is just taking too much of a toll on you just throw it away i know it sucks sometimes but it's better than treating your whole collection or it's better than just having a plant that's just really sad and goes into shock from over treatment and also if you have dealt with thrips and you live in another country outside of the u.s definitely leave some tips down below to let to help other people worldwide that have dealt with this and can't get the products that i have and also even if you're inside the u.s definitely let me know how you treat thrips because i'm interested in trying other ways of treating for thrips as well also have you dealt with predatory mites just let me know all the things in the comments down below i hope you all enjoyed this video i hope you all are staying safe sane happy and healthy and I will see you in my next one. Bye!